Apple just held its Wonderlust event where it announced the Apple Watch Series 9, Apple Watch Ultra 2, iPhone 15, and iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max models. I want to tell you all the updates. A lot of the lineup has stayed pretty similar, but there are some big updates, especially with the ultra wideband chips in the watch and phone and a new Tetra Prism camera in the iPhone 15 Pro Max. We'll get into it. First, Tim Cook opened the event with an update on some Apple products and reaffirming that the Apple Vision Pro headset will be available early next year in 2024. Also, a bunch of YouTube creators got shout outs in quotes about the 15 inch MacBook Air and the Apple Vision Pro, which is really nice. Then they quickly went to the Apple Watch Series 9. Now the design of the Apple Watch Series 9 remains pretty similar to the Apple Watch 8 and Series 7, but there are some different internals. It does have a new S9 chip, will make it faster than previous Apple Watches, but also enable things like offline Siri. Many Siri commands will actually be able to happen locally on the physical Apple Watch rather than having to contact a server or the internet. Apple says this will make dictation with Siri up to 25% faster, and some requests, like on the Apple Watch Ultra and setting waypoints, you'll be able to do right on the Apple Watch. Another cool feature this S9 chip enables is that some of the health data that you can access will now be available via Siri. I track my sleep with my Apple Watch every night and come Series 9 and Ultra 2, you'll actually just be able to ask Siri, how much sleep did I get last night? And it will be able to give you an answer without actually going into the health app. You can also do things like log your weight and other health related activities right from Siri, no longer having to go to your iPhone. And another chip that gets upgraded in the Apple Watch Series 9, Ultra 2, and the iPhone 15 lineup is a new second generation ultra wideband chip. This is gonna enable some really cool features like precision find my for your iPhone on your Apple Watch. I know my wife uses this all the time where you can ping your iPhone from your Apple Watch. Well, now you'll be able to just do more than ping it and make it sound. You'll actually be able to see how far away your iPhone is from your watch with this new ultra wideband chip and tell you when you're right on top of it. Plus you can still have it make a sound. And this new ultra wideband chip is gonna work three times farther than the first version. So if it's lost in another room per se, you might actually be able to see that distance right there on your watch. This also plays into the iPhone 15 Find My app, which we'll get to in a second. You'll be able to do name drop on the Apple Watch Series 9. We're just tapping watches. You can share your contact info. It's gonna have some widgets pop up on your face when you come near a HomePod using that ultra wideband chip. And Apple spent a good amount of time saying the new S9 chip is going to enable a new double tap feature on the Series 9 and Ultra 2, meaning you can take action on your Apple Watch just by tapping your fingers. I thought this was a little strange because there's actually been an accessibility setting for Apple Watch that has existed for years called a double pinch gesture. You can actually program fist clenches and pinches to perform actions on the Apple Watch right now. You don't need the S9 chip. It seems like the S9 chip will allow a more accurate input method for the double tap, but I'm curious how this is going to differ from that pinch gesture we've had in the accessibility settings this whole time. The display will also be a little brighter at 2000 nits. It'll be available in aluminum and stainless steel. No nope, ceramic or titanium finishes on the regular Series 9 Apple Watch. The aluminum starts at $400, stainless steel at $700. Comes in multiple colors. Stainless steel is gold, silver, and graphite and the aluminum has five colors, including a new pink color. Now, Apple had a big section of the keynote that talked about sustainability and clean energy. And during this portion, they announced they are no longer going to make any leather products. No leather Apple Watch bands, no leather iPhone cases, no leather at all. Instead, it's replacing with a new material called Fine Woven. That's all one word, capital F, capital W. I'll be honest, I thought Fine Woven was a funny name at first, but it's a real deal. You can actually see these Fine Woven bands and you can order some iPhone 15 Fine Woven cases right now in the Apple Store. Apple says this is a suede-like material and I'll actually be getting an iPhone 15 Pro Max fine woven case in just a couple days. So subscribe to the channel, be on the lookout. I'll do an unboxing and a field test if you would. Apple moved on to the Apple Watch Ultra 2. This is an update over last year's first Apple Watch Ultra model. The big update here is that S9 chip and second generation ultra wideband chip, giving the Apple Watch Ultra all those features that we talked about in the Apple Watch Series 9. Things like the Precision Find My, Name Drop, and more powerful Siri functionality because of the S9. Apple made the display even brighter, up to 3000 nits, which Apple says is the brightest display it has ever made. And there's a new modular Ultra Apple Watch face available just on the Apple Watch Ultra. Gives you even more data right there on the face if you're an adventurer and you just want all that stuff right there on the watch. Same battery life and same titanium color. There were some rumors that we would get some kind of graphite or black Apple Watch Ultra. That is not the case, just one color and the Apple Watch Ultra still starts at $800, one size 49 millimeters. You can actually order the Apple Watch Series 9 or Apple Watch Ultra 2 right now in the Apple Store app or on apple.com. They will arrive September 22nd if you get in there before all the stock depletes. But don't worry, the iPhone 15 pre-orders are actually this Friday, so you haven't missed that just yet. Depends when you watch this video, you, you might have missed it. Pre-orders for the iPhone 15 are September 15th, this Friday as I record. 
Then we move on to the iPhone 15 lineup. Big change here is the iPhone 15 gets the dynamic island, the same that the iPhone 14 Pro had last year. We have the same iPhone sizes, 6.1 and 6.7 inches in the iPhone 15 or 15 Plus. Apple says it's using a new color-infused glass process on the back. It comes in five colors, pink, yellow, green, blue, and black. And there is a big upgrade to the camera on the iPhone 15. Last year, the iPhone 14 Pro got a 48 megapixel sensor for the main camera. Well, that 48 megapixel sensor is now coming to the base model iPhone 15. This will allow you to do a 2x zoom and still retain a lot of quality and resolution. Apple didn't say you'd be able to shoot Pro Raw natively with that 48 megapixel sensor, meaning you won't get 48 megapixel size photos natively, but third-party camera app maker Halide says they can probably enable that 48 megapixel and Pro Raw photos in their app for the iPhone 15. The iPhone 15 gets the A16 Bionic chip, which was last year's Pro chip, but it will be an upgrade for that base model. You'll be faster than the iPhone 14. And more importantly, I think you get that second generation ultra wideband chip in the iPhone 15. Again, the second gen ultra wideband chip works three times farther than the first generation. And you'll now be able to do precision find my for people. So if you share your location with someone else, you'll not only see them on a map, but if they are close in your vicinity, let's say you're at an open market like Apple showed in their video, you'll actually be able to see what direction they're in and how far they are if they also have this second generation ultra wideband chip. That's pretty cool. Apple is adding more features to the satellite connectivity in iPhone 15, and you'll actually be able to text roadside assistance from your iPhone 15 or 15 Pro, even if you have no cellular data. So if you're in the middle of nowhere, you can use satellite SOS and text roadside assistance. Like the Apple Watch bands, iPhone has no more leather cases, but you get a series of fine woven cases and Apple is still keeping the silicone cases around. And it is nice, it seems the fine woven cases are similar in price, about $10 more than the silicone. And the big change that was rumored and did come to pass is there is no more lightning port on your iPhone. So that charging port that you've had on your iPhone for the past 10 years is now gone and now charges with USB-C. Now on the iPhone 15, that USB-C port is not gonna give you any faster data transfer speeds. It's still USB 2.0 speeds. But the 15 Pro lineup actually gets USB 3.0 speeds. I'll talk about that in a second. I was a little caught off guard. I thought Apple would actually update a bunch of its accessories to USB-C, like the MagSafe Duo Charger, the MagSafe Battery Pack, but it seems like these devices are just not on their website anymore. They're just totally gone. And they did update the AirPods Pro 2 with USB-C if you buy them new right now, but you can buy the case by itself with USB-C, and that also leaves AirPods 3, AirPods Max, and of course, all like the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse devices, all of those still have lightning. So it's a little weird time right now where the iPhone is gonna have USB-C, but some of the other accessories have just disappeared or are still on lightning, so kind of strange. You can pre-order the iPhone 15 this Friday, September 15th. Pre-orders open at 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific, and the iPhone 15 starts at $800. Oh, also, it wasn't mentioned in the keynote, but iOS 17 and all the features that were mentioned at WWDC will be available Monday, September 8th for everyone to download. If you wanna see my video on the top features of iOS 17, Check it out above or the links in the description. And finally, we come to the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max lineup. There is a big difference when it comes to the camera of these devices. We'll get to that in a second. The iPhone 15 Pro models are now made from titanium instead of that stainless steel band. They should actually make the phone lighter and it has a new brushed look along the edges. I think it looks pretty sweet, actually. Apple said that this titanium is the same used on the Mars Rover. It's apparently grade five titanium. Sounds cool, I guess. Same screen sizes, 6.1 and 6.7 for the Pro Max. No ultra naming on the iPhone. That was a previous leak, didn't happen this year. Apple did say the back of your iPhone will be more repairable for the Pro models, which is nice. I actually cracked the back of my iPhone 14 Pro recently, had to replace the whole phone. While on the 15 Pro models, now that will be easier to replace. The iPhone 15 Pro models also get rid of that lightning port and transition to USB-C, but it will have USB 3.0 transfer speeds. It's not Thunderbolt speeds, which were some of the rumors, but USB 3.0 is actually much faster. You can actually transfer videos and other data at 10 gigabits per second, so way better than USB 2.0 for sure. And that's enabled by the new A17 Pro chip that's in the iPhone 15 Pro. This is interesting because it's the first time the Pro moniker has been put on an iPhone chip, the 17 Pro. Maybe one day we might see a Pro Max chip, but right now, all we have is the A17 Pro chip. It's gonna be much faster, especially for gaming. Now enables features like ray tracing and much smoother graphics. So you play games on your iPhone, they're gonna look way better on the 15 Pro and Pro Max. And another big change is the mute switch is now gone, replaced by an action button. I'll be honest, I really like the mute switch. It's been there since the original iPhone, but this new action button can be programmed to a wide variety of uses. You can have it launch the camera, voice memos, 
You can still have it be a mute switch, or you can even launch shortcuts using the action button. I am definitely having that run a shortcut, and then you can hopefully include muting as one of the actions that come up in a menu when you tap that button. The final big change here is the camera system. On the iPhone 15 Pro, there's gonna be some additional features for that main camera. Photographers can actually specify whether they want a 24, 28, or 35 millimeter focal length when they first open the camera. They can set it as default. But the big camera upgrade is actually coming just to the larger iPhone 15 Pro Max model. That larger version is going to get a 5X optical zoom telephoto lens. Apple is calling this a Tetra Prism design. This is a matter of what you heard before as a periscope camera. Well, Apple's calling it Tetra Prism, and it reflects the light four different times before it hits the sensor, giving you that 5X optical zoom. We'll have to get it in hand. I highly recommend looking for Austin Mann's review of the new iPhones, probably gonna come out early next week, but this should give you much better pictures when you use that telephoto lens. There's also upgrades to the ultra wide camera for those macro shots or just having that super wide shot and some updates to video filming. No 8K video, but you can record 4K at 60 frames per second ProRes video. That's the first time that's available on an iPhone. And with that new USB-C with 3.0 transfer speeds, you can actually film on your iPhone and have that video footage transferred directly to an external storage device so you don't have to take up all that room on your iPhone. That's pretty wild. So record directly to an external device don't take up your iPhone storage. And you can even now encode your video using log, which is something a lot of filmmakers use, but pretty wild you can do that on an iPhone. And lastly, you can actually record spatial video on the iPhone 15 Pro models. Spatial video was announced with the Apple Vision Pro. That will let you experience those videos in a 3D space, very immersive experience from what everyone says, and you'll be able to capture that on the iPhone. You won't be able to experience the spatial video on your iPhone, but then you can see it on the Apple Vision Pro headset when it comes out early next year. The iPhone 15 Pro starts at $1,000, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max starts at $1,200. All right, that's everything announced today from Apple's Wonderlust event. Again, pre-orders for the Apple Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2 are open right now, delivers September 22nd on Friday, and pre-orders for the iPhone 15, 15 Pro, and 15 Pro Max all opens this Friday, September 15th at 8 a.m. Eastern, and then it delivers September 22nd as well. You can also get those fine woven cases and those deliver in like a couple days. I'll be honest, I've always been a regular iPhone 14 Pro guy. I don't like the larger size, but I am very curious about this Tetra Prism camera. So I'll be going with the iPhone 15 Pro Max model this year, which comes in four titanium finishes, basically various shades of gray and then kind of a grayish blue. I think I'm gonna go blue this year. And I did pre-order an Apple Watch Ultra 2, mostly because the trade-in value for the first model Apple Watch is really good. You can get about $380 if it's in good condition trade-in value for the original Apple Watch when you buy the Ultra 2. You can do that right on Apple's website. You ship your old one back to them. Yes, you could probably get more in the aftermarket selling it on Facebook Marketplace, but honestly, I just find it's way easier just to send it back to Apple. So what are you getting that was announced at today's Apple event? Leave a comment below this video. I'd love to see what you're getting. Is the Pro Max enough to entice you to that larger screen size? And are you updating your Apple Watch from an older version to the Series 9? Let me know in the comments what you're gonna do. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, new devices. It's tech season, techtember, techtober. So we'll be covering it right here in new videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.